The Clampett family lives a peaceful life in the woods of Arkansas. The daughter Ellie is quite a tomboy and loves animals, but she also knows how to deal with them. When a bear tries to steal the honey she got from a comb, Ellie just wrestles the bear until it runs away in fear. Granny Daisy specializes in homemade medicine, but sometimes she also uses tricks to help her patients, like hitting a man's stomach to make him expel gas for his indigestion. Lastly there's the father Jed, who likes to go hunting with his dog. One morning, he misses his target and accidentally shoots the ground, revealing a surprising amount of oil. Jed doesn't think much of it and returns home, but just a few moments later, a helicopter lands outside the house. Three men working for Ozark Mountain Oil want to offer $1 billion for the land, but Jed hesitates to sign because he doesn't understand paperwork, so Ellie proposes they wait for her cousin Jetro because he's the smart one. Sometime later, cousin Jetro and Aunt Pearl arrive at the house, although it's clear that they aren't any smarter than the rest of the family. Pearl advises Jed that he should accept the deal and go to live in California to give Ellie a better life, perhaps even find a new wife that can help him raise her properly. While they discuss their options, Ellie goes outside and discovers a man spying through the window, making her assume the worst. She picks him up and takes him into the house, only to discover he's a worker from the oil company that was sent to ask about the contract. Having made up his mind, Jed signs the papers and announces they're going to Beverly Hills. The next morning, they pack their things and put them in Jetro's disastrous car, although Ellie is sad she can't bring all her animals except for the dog. Daisy doesn't want to leave her beloved house, so the family just ties her in the chair to the back of the car and takes her by force. Sometime later, they make it to California, where other drivers passive-aggressively make fun of their car and give them the finger. The family doesn't understand they're being insulted and assume the finger is a local way to say hi, so they start giving the finger to anyone that drives nearby. When a couple of thugs respond by pointing their guns at them, Jed simply shows off his bigger weapon and scares the boys away. They also stop to pick up any roadkill they see to cook later. Meanwhile the CEO of the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills Mr. Drysdale is discussing the arrival of the Clampets with his assistant Jane because he wants to be sure that the family's well and they don't lose such an important new client. Drysdale notices his employee Tyler is trying to spy on them using the intercoms and asks him to come to his office, causing Tyler to get some nervous that he crashes against a bunch of equipment. Once Tyler makes it to his desk, Drysdale comments he knows Tyler has been excited about the arrival of the Clampets and has even prepared the paperwork, but Drysdale will be handling that account personally and wants Tyler to burn everything he's prepared with his name. To make his point against Tyler's arrogance, Drysdale kicks Tyler's chair to make him fall. Afterward, Drysdale goes home to get his family ready to have dinner with the Clampets. His wife Margaret wants to help even if she prefers to spend time with her dog. Drysdale asks his son Morgan to befriend Ellie and show her around the school, and when Morgan refuses to hang out with a girl, Drysdale threatens him with cutting him off. Tyler also goes home and talks to his girlfriend Laura to let her know about the Clampets because she's an expert con artist and they could take advantage of this once he gathers some intel. At the Clampets' new house, Jane is getting everything ready for their arrival. When the family finally comes, Jane thinks they're thieves and calls the police before confronting them. Jed tries to explain the oil story by showing off his weapon, but Jane only thinks he's threatening her. At that moment the police arrive and throw a gas grenade into the house, but Ellie just kicks it back at them and causes them to scatter. Moments later, the whole family is being held at the police station, and Drysdale arrives to make sure the thieves are given the right punishment. However when he hears the names of the family members, he almost has a heart attack realizing these are his new clients. Once things have been cleared up and the family is released, Drysdale fires Jane and apologizes repeatedly to the Clampets, saying he'll do anything they want to make up for the mistake. Jed only asks for one thing, to hire Jane back and make her watch over his affairs, because she thought the house had been in danger and did her best to protect it, and Jed's impressed by that. They seal the deal by spitting on their hands and shaking them. Then Drysdale offers a ride on his limousine, which the family thinks it's a hearse and they stop to pay their respect. After explanations are done, Jetro also notices Drysdale has a second car that is incredibly fancy and asks to drive it. Drysdale doesn't like the idea, but he says yes just to please his client. The group takes the streets and Drysdale has to watch Jetro drive his expensive car in the dumbest way possible. He also calls Jane to tell her she must take care of anything the family may need. Jane asks Jed about his plans for the future, and Jed says his priority right now is finding a new wife so Ellie can have a mother. Jane doesn't know anything about matchmaking, but Drysdale orders her to help anyway. In the evening, Drysdale and Margaret have dinner with the Clampets, who still haven't gotten used to the new life. They're eating on the pool table and Daisy is cooking roadkill on the fancy china while their dogs become friendly with each other. Drysdale asks Jetro what he wants to do, and Jetro says he wants to be a bank president like him. Jed points out it's impossible because Drysdale's already the president, but maybe Jetro could be vice president. Finding himself cornered, Drysdale accepts to take Jetro as his employee. At that moment, Tyler arrives at the house with welcome flowers, saying it's a gift from the bank but he's actually here to spy. When he offers to shake hands, Ellie thinks he wants to fight and quickly throws him on the ground. This makes Jed wonder how he could make his daughter more girly and refined, so Drysdale and Margaret point out she needs a proper tutor, which gives Tyler an idea. 
However Ellie doesn't want to change who she is and runs outside to hide in a tree. Jed goes after her and explains that while he did the best to raise her after his wife's death, he never was able to teach her how to be a girl, and he thinks that's important too. He also points out his wife had been a total lady, which convinces Ellie to accept the classes to be more like her mom. The next day, Tyler tells Laura that the Clampets are idiots and that Jed is looking for a wife and a teacher for his daughter, which gives them the perfect plan. Moments later, Laura shows up at the mansion pretending to be a French tutor offering her services, but Jethro has already forgotten last night's conversation and tells her they don't need her. At that moment Jed arrives and notices Laura is exactly what they need, making Jethro have a late realization as well. Afterward, Jed takes Laura to meet Ellie, who is in spending time in the swimming pool because her animals have finally arrived. Ellie accepts Laura as her teacher, and Laura has to pretend to like all the animals harassing her. She also watches in awe at how stupid the family really is, Jethro doesn't understand bowling and thinks he must race the ball to hit the pins first with his head. While Laura gives Ellie her first lesson, Jane arrives to show Jed the preliminary bridal prospects she's chosen so far. Becoming Jed's wife is part of Laura's plan, so she pretends to trip and bumps into Jane, causing her to drop all her paperwork in the pool. Jane has a copy at the office and tries to leave to pick it up, but she finds the front gate blocked by one of the family's cows. She presses the bell intercom to ask for help, and in the house, Jethro thinks her voice is coming from inside the wall, thus he begins breaking it down to save her. The next day, Morgan shows up to pick up Ellie for her first day at school. As soon as he sees her, he's impressed by her beauty, and now he doesn't mind hanging out with her at all. At school, Ellie tries to be friendly, but people ignore her because they judge her clothes. Suddenly a trio of thugs bothers Jed for his lunch money, and they show that the last person that didn't pay has been stuffed into a locker. Ellie wonders why Morgan listens to them, and Morgan explains the leader is the captain of the wrestling team. Meanwhile Jethro is given an office at the bank, and he entertains himself by sharpening pencils with a machine. Jane visits him to ask about Jed's likes and dislikes, and Jethro tells her everything, including the fact Jed's birthday is coming soon. All this is heard by Tyler, who is spying through the intercom and taking notes. Jane is also slowly developing a crush on Jethro. In the afternoon, Jed hears his favorite song and discovers Laura is playing it. He joins her in the room and the two of them end up dancing as Laura pretends to like all the same things Jed likes thanks to Tyler's intel. She also calls Jed handsome and says any woman would be lucky to have him. In the evening, Jethro takes Jane out in his car, which makes Jane wonder why he hasn't changed it. Jethro explains that Jed taught him not to waste money just because they have it, but he may give his current car an upgrade or two. Suddenly Jethro pulls over saying he has a surprise, and Jane thinks they're about to have a romantic moment, but actually he wants to show off his idea to help Jed. It turns out he's put up a huge billboard promoting Jed's search for a wife and asking any candidates to come to the bank. To make matters worse, Jethro has also recorded a TV ad with the same message. The next morning, hundreds of women of all ages and races plus two men show up at the bank for an interview with Jethro. Drysdale arrives ready to scold Jane for these tactics, but he quickly shuts up when he learns it was Jethro's idea. Jane explains they'll put all the profiles in a computer program that will analyze the information and narrow the candidates to just five. Meanwhile Morgan takes Ellie to the school gym to watch the wrestling team. The thugs immediately begin bothering him and try to make him kiss the floor, but Ellie saves him and announces she wants to join the team. Women usually aren't allowed, but the leader will make an exception just to beat up a hillbilly, which causes Ellie to push him to the ground. The couch immediately pulls them apart and tells Ellie she'll need a signed permission slip from home to join. Sometime later, Jane is working with Jethro on putting all the candidates information on the system when she's suddenly called to Drysdale's office. He's having a meeting with a famous horse breeder that is looking for potential buyers that want to start their own stables, and Drysdale promises her he'll get her a meeting with Jed just to be nice. After the woman leaves, Drysdale orders Jane to keep the breeder away from the Clampets because they don't know how to take financial risks. However Jethro overhears the woman on the phone telling her business partner that Drysdale said she'd be a great partner for Jed, and misunderstanding what she means, Jethro immediately takes her home. When Jed meets the breeder, their talk quickly goes downhill because she keeps mentioning things like breeding and multiple partners, and Jed assumes she's into some weird stuff. Their talk is interrupted when Ellie enters the house on Jed's new bike, riding like crazy because she doesn't know how to control it. Somehow Daisy ends up on the bike next and falls into the pool, so Jethro rushes to help her. Jed apologizes to the breeder for the commotion and brings up the subject of marriage, scaring the woman away. The next day, Ellie shows up for the wrestling team tryouts, and Morgan sends messages to the entire school so they come and watch. With her skills, Ellie easily beats up the team captain, embarrassing him in front of everyone. The coach doesn't hesitate and names her the new captain of the wrestling team. A few days later, Drysdale throws a birthday party for Jed. Jethro shows up in his new modified vehicle, which now looks like a monster truck, and Jane likes it because it's very macho. She tells Jethro that after Jed gets married, maybe they should find him a wife too as an attempt to flirt, but Jethro says he wants to be a Hollywood bachelor. Jethro doesn't understand fancy food like sushi, so he ends up ordering a huge sandwich for himself. 
Ellie is wearing a fancy dress for the first time, and Morgan tries to ask her out, getting a big shock when she says yes. When Ellie is left alone, Laura proceeds with her plan by pretending to be sad and crying. Ellie checks on her and Laura explains Jed thinks Laura would be a wonderful wife, but Laura is afraid Ellie won't accept her because she's too young to be her mom, then Laura runs away for dramatic effect. Next, Laura corners Jed and tells him she loves Ellie like a daughter, and that Ellie said she would love to have her as a mom, but Laura knows Jed already has other options in mind. Jed decides to talk with Ellie and both of them think the other wants Laura in their lives, so they agree Jed will marry her. Afterward, Jed blows out the candles and is surprised with a gift of his own private concert by Dolly Parton. Jed takes the chance to take the mic and ask Laura to marry him, which she obviously accepts, and the evening ends with everyone dancing to Dolly's music. The next day, Daisy calls Pearl to share the big news and invite the whole family to the wedding. While Daisy admits she doesn't trust Laura, Jethro's twin sister Jethreen is so happy for her uncle that she's already crying. Meanwhile Tyler convinces Jed to sign some papers saying it's a prenuptial agreement sent by Jane, and Jed trusts the mention of her name. Afterward Tyler meets with Laura to discuss the plan in the garden, unaware that Daisy is nearby and can hear everything. As soon as she realizes what's going on, Daisy begins screaming, so Tyler and Laura run to tie her up and kidnap her, which causes Daisy to drop her tonic bottle in the process. The group leaves in Tyler's car, and Daisy tries to attack him with her legs, but Laura pushes her away before an accident happens. Moments later, Tyler and Laura drop Daisy at a nursing home, and the director agrees to put her through electroshock therapy. Meanwhile Jed's huge family takes a plane for the first time ever. They don't understand any of the security instructions and as soon as the plane takes off, they begin playing music and dancing, bothering the other passengers. At the mansion, Jane is worried because she hasn't seen Daisy in a while, but Jed tells her not to worry because she also left when he married Ellie's mother. Jane's still worried and goes looking for Daisy, only to find the tonic bottle on the floor. Since Daisy never leaves without it, Jane suspects foul play and goes to the police, but the cops can't do anything if the family says it's common for Granny to leave. Jane decides to instead hire a private investigator, who immediately brings the results. He explains Laura is a con artist with many names that has already married 12 guys for their money, he also tells her where Daisy is. Jane immediately calls Tyler and tells him to stop the wedding while she takes care of other things. Obviously Tyler lies and tells Drysdale that Jane called to say they should start the wedding without her. While the mansion begins getting crowded with the huge hillbilly family, Jane dresses up as a nurse and goes to the nursing home, gaining access to Daisy by pretending she's here for the rabies test. Daisy is in a bad state because of all the electroshock therapy she's been put through, but Jane quickly makes her better by making her drink her tonic. Then they leave the building through the fire escape right before the nurses catch them. In the mansion, everyone's getting ready. Tyler has opened the bank account on his computer and is waiting to hear I do so he can transfer all of the Clampett's money to a Swiss account. Jethreen ends up sitting next to him, and she won't stop flirting with him. The ceremony begins with the usual sermon, but when Jane and Daisy arrive and try to join it, they aren't allowed to enter because they don't have the invitations. Daisy wants to fight the receptionists, but Jane drags her away with a better idea, they take Jethro's monster truck and crash the wedding right before the priest can seal the marriage. Everyone runs away in fear while the women tell Jed and Drysdale the truth about Tyler and Laura. Speaking of Tyler, he still tries to use the computer to transfer the money, but Laura takes Jed's favorite weapon and shoots the machine before the transfer is completed. Then she gives Tyler a crazy kick, causing him to fall right into Jethreen's arms. While Daisy runs after Laura, Jethreen starts kissing Tyler. Meanwhile Jed apologizes to Ellie for his failure, but Ellie swears she doesn't need a mother as long as she has her dad and granny. Jed decides that even if there isn't a wedding, they shouldn't waste the celebration and they throw a party just for fun. As the family starts playing music and dancing, Daisy captures Laura and brings her to the dance circle, where she's put through all classic hillbilly moves. Ellie also takes the chance to throw Laura on a table with a wrestling move as revenge. At that moment, the cops arrive and arrest Tyler and Laura for fraud and kidnapping. In the meantime, Margaret looks for her very expensive dog and discovers she's had puppies with the Clampett's mutt. The day ends with a huge celebration that everyone enjoys together regardless of their class. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.